going to kind of look at is more work with normal distributions and how we can uh, use some of ours built-in functionality to model things with uh, that we know are draw a normal distribution. So to start, we've been using this uh, R norm to generate points from a normal distribution. So here we're generating points from a normal distribution. By default, it's mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Turn that into a data frame, draw a plot. You know, now we're filling it with some color. You can just get this from any like, any color picker. Here, okay. Um, but now we have a normal distribution. And we can ask further questions about it. For example, um, how often did a certain value occur, or what was the frequency of a certain value? And you know, in this case, we can use denorm to look that up. Uh, the denorm of zero was 0.39. And again, if we look at this plot, that's roughly where we would end up over here. About 0.39, okay, which means that outcome occurred 39% of the time. All right. Also, we know that that outcome uh, demarcates half of the data. So half of the data is on this side, and half of the data is on this side. And we can find that using Q norm. We say 0.5. So where did half of the values uh, occur? It says zero. And finally, um, if we look up p norm of uh, zero, this tells us how much of the data is to the left of it. All right, so that's also telling us that 0.5 of the data uh, is to the left of zero. All right, so d norm just tells you the height at a given point. Q norm tells you. Um, the x coordinate of a given percentage, and p norm tells you what percentage is to the left of a given point. So let's look at another example where we have a, a normal distribution other than the standard normal. So we'll say that we're dealing with some SAT scores here that are drawn from a normal distribution with mean of 600 and standard deviation of 110. All right, and we want to talk about the score at 700. So that's where we have this line drawn, is at 700. If we want to look at how much data is to the left of this, we can use p norm. And the point is 700. And this is in a distribution with mean of 600 and standard deviation of 110. So we get back 0.81834, or so on, so on. But essentially, what that means is that about 82% of the data is over here to the left of this point 700 okay and alternatively if we say 1 minus this number we get how much data is to the right of this so 0.18 okay and finally we could go the other way you know if we were interested in and just kind of verifying what we know here, if we were interested in what point uh, marks off that percentage of data when we have a mean of 600 and standard deviation of 110, we can use Q norm, and it tells us that, sure enough, that's at 700. So again, a couple of different uh, functions. P norm and Q norm are probably the ones that we'll use the most. Um, D norm does help, but it just would tell you what the height was at this point, Okay, how frequently that one value occurs. And usually we're more interested in how much data is below or above a given point. 